بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبا القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا ولا سيما بقية الله في أرضه وحجته على عباده المهدي المنتظر صاحب العصر والزمان عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فتلقى آدم من ربه كلمات فتاب عليه إنه هو التواب الرحيم Respected viewers, wherever you are, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته After Prophet Adam عليه السلام ate from the tree Allah brought him down to this dunya, to this lower life. And Adam became very regretful. He began repenting. He began crying and repenting and asking Allah to forgive him. Even though we mentioned in the previous episode that Adam, what he did was not a sin. It was just not doing what Allah tells him to do, something that is liked by Allah. But Adam, he chose to repent to Allah. He chose to seek the path of repentance. When you have Allah in your heart, and for a split second, you lose that connection with Allah. You feel a deep emptiness in your heart. And this is what Prophet Adam felt. So he began seeking that stronger relationship with Allah. He began repenting and worshipping and doing istighfar, asking Allah to forgive him. Sometimes we need to also seek that path that Adam took. We need to repent to Allah. Because if you repent to Allah, if you turn to Allah, your heart will be alive. Your heart will revive. Adam, he felt very weak. He felt very sick. He felt very disgusted with himself because of eating from that tree, even though it wasn't a sin. But he cried so much and he felt like he did something very wrong because, eating from the, eat it, because of eating from the tree. So he began crying and crying. This is why the narrations say that there are five bakka'un, five that are mentioned in history that they cried a lot. They cried very much. One was Adam, one was Yaqub, one was Yusuf, one was Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, and one was Imam Zain al-Abideen. These five are the ones, the Bakka'un al-Khams, the five who are known for crying. Adam, he cried because he lost that position that he had. He came down from heaven to the earth. We have not seen the heaven. This is why we don't care. This is why we're not sad if we do something wrong. But Adam, he saw the heaven and now he was living in earth. So he wanted to go back. He yearned for that connection with Allah so Allah would bring him back. Allah would take him back to that heaven. So he would cry and cry because he lost that connection with Allah. He lost that closeness that he had with Allah. Allah was always protecting him. Now Allah told him, you ate from the tree, you will have to deal with the consequences. You have to go and live in the dunya. You have to live in the lower life. So he began crying. Yaqub, we will mention when we come to the story of Prophet Yaqub, he cried because he lost his son Yusuf. And Yusuf cried because he lost his father. And Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, she cried because after losing her father, she saw that the whole world turned upside down for her. Everything changed. The power was taken. 
the Ahlul Bayt were not respected. Everything changed for them. And Imam Zain al Abidin cried because he saw his father and his family members and his father's companions butchered in front of him one after the other. But now we go back to Adam. Imam al Sadiq says that Adam did tawaf around the Kaaba. He was the first one who built the Kaaba. He was the first one who built the place of worship, this house of Allah. He did tawaf around the Kaaba for a hundred years. One hundred years he did tawaf around the Kaaba, not once looking at Hawa. When the narrations say that Allah, when He first created Hawa, He created Hawa Eve after creating Adam. Adam was very happy that now he has a partner, now he has someone to be with him, someone when someone to be with him in his journey in this life. He was very happy that Allah created Hawa. But because of his repentance, and we, we can see how sincere he was in his repentance. Imam al-Sadiq, he says, not once throughout these hundred years, he did not look at Hawa while doing, while doing tawaf around the Kaaba, while asking Allah to forgive him. Imam al-Sadiq says, while he was doing tawaf, he would say, Allahumma aqilni athrati. وَاغْفِرْ زَلَّتِي وَاعِدْنِي إِلَى الدَّارِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجْتَنِي مِنْهَا Oh Allah, forgive me. I made a minor mistake. I did not mean to disobey you. I did not intentionally disobey you. And please, take me back to that life that I was living in. He wanted to go back to that heaven. He wanted to go back because he was living in a better place. Imagine someone takes you out of a very comfortable place and takes you to a much lower place. How would you feel? You would feel depressed. You would want to leave that place and go back to the better place that you are living in. This is exactly what happened to Adam. Allah, the narration says that Allah forgave him. Allah forgave him for what he did, but he had to stay on the earth. Because this is what scholars call athar wad'i. This means that, for example, if someone goes and he drinks poison, drinking the poison is haram, that's a sin. Allah will punish you for that sin. And the poison itself will harm you. But, for example, let's say someone he drank poison, or he drank something that, that is harmful for him, that's haram, then he was treated he asked Allah to forgive him. Allah forgave him for drinking the poison, but he still has to deal with the consequences of the poison. The body has to deal with the consequences. This is why when we do haram things, when we eat haram food, I can ask Allah to forgive me. If I'm sincere, Allah will forgive me. But Allah will tell me, you will have to deal with the consequences in this life. And this is what Adam had to deal with. Adam, he ate from the tree, he had to deal with the consequences living in earth. But Allah forgave him. But Adam did not forgive him just yet. There was something that he had to say. There was something that he had to do for Allah to forgive him. Adam, he kept crying and he kept insisting on Allah to forgive him. And we mentioned that he had two rivers of tears draining down his eyes. Because of the crying, he had this two rivers on his face. This shows how sincere he was in his repentance. Now where are we? Let us pause and think about ourselves. Adam, he did one minor mistake that was not even a sin. This is how much he was crying. Where are we from our sins? We are constantly sinning. We are constantly disobeying Allah. We are constantly hurting other people backbiting, speaking about other people. We are constantly eating haram food. Maybe it's haram food itself or maybe that food is from haram money that we, we receive that money by tricking and fooling and deceiving people. That is also haram food. Where are we from our sins? Do we ever pause and repent to Allah? Do we ever look at the consequences of our actions? We must learn from our father Adam and repent and ask Allah to forgive us for what we are doing. 
Sometimes we intentionally disobey Allah. We know that we are doing something haram and yet we go ahead and we disobey Allah. Adam, he did not intentionally disobey Allah and he cried so much. And he asked Allah to forgive him so much. Allah says in the Quran, some of the things that they would say, قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا Oh our Lord, we oppressed ourselves. ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَخْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will be from the losers. And this is exactly what we have to say. Allah does not come and mention these stories in the Qur'an for our entertainment, for us to just read stories. When we sin, when we disobey Allah, we are not, we are not oppressing anyone other than ourselves. When I oppress Allah, when I disobey Allah, I'm hurting myself. I am the one who will have to meet the, the consequences of my actions. When I eat haram food, when I look at something haram, when I say something haram, I am the one, I, am, I will be oppressing myself. I won't be oppressing anyone else because I will be the one who has to deal with the consequences of my actions. So Allah says, قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا we oppressed ourselves. By eating from the tree, they did not harm Allah. When we do something haram, we're not hurting Allah. When I don't pray, Allah won't gain, Allah does not gain anything from my prayer or He does not lose anything when I don't pray. But I am the one who will harm myself. When I disrespect the values of my religion, I will be the one who, who will harm myself because the religion, all of the rules of the religion, they are for our own good. You have the hijab to protect society, the prayer to strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We strengthen our relationship with Allah so we live in this society without harming one another. Allah has rules of homes and zakat, charity, where I make sure none, no one in society will be starving, no one will be living in a bad condition. But when we refuse to take the rules of Allah, we harm ourselves and we harm our own societies. So Allah says, قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَّنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَخْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ If you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will be the losers. We will be the ones who will lose everything. Then they said something. Allah says in the Quran, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Then there was, a, there was words, there was a dialogue between Adam and Allah, then Allah forgave him. Some scholars say that the words, the dialogue was this verse that I just mentioned. Chapter Al-A'raf, verse 23. Oh Allah, we have oppressed ourselves. If you don't forgive us, then we will be the losers. And there is another Another thing that they said that is mentioned in the narrations and that is they did tawassul in Rasulullah and the Ahlul Bayt. They, uh, Adam asked Allah by the love of Rasulullah and the Ahlul Bayt. And this is not what the Shia say. This is first of all what the Imams of the Shia say and this is what the Sunni scholars say. Al-Hakim al Naishaburi, one of the main Sunni scholars, he says in the tafsir of this verse, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 37. The tafsir of this verse, and this is a Sunni scholar. He says that Adam said, he turned to Allah and he said, اللهم اغفر لي بحق محمد Oh Allah, forgive me by the position of Muhammad, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله. Then Al-Hakim al Nishaburi says that Allah told Adam, Oh Adam, who is Muhammad? How do you know Muhammad? I have not created Muhammad yet. Only the soul, only the light of Muhammad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was created. Adam tells Allah, when you created me, I saw on the arsh, I saw on the throne of Allah written, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah. This is one tafsir, but 
The verse says, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتِ Adam, between Adam and his Lord, there was an exchange of words, not one word. And Muhammad is one word. So what were these words? This is why, this is why Ibn Hajar, another Sunni scholar, he says, no. There was, not only Muhammad was written on the throne, another sentence was written. لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله آل محمد خير البرية. The family of Muhammad are the best creation of Allah. This is what Adam turned to Allah with. He turned to Allah through tawassul, asking Allah to forgive him through Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, Rasulullah and his holy household. This is what Ad Allah forgave Adam with. After saying this, Allah forgave him. The, some people, they accuse the Shias of believing in tawassul and shirk. This is something that a Sunni scholar mentions that Prophet Adam did before the Ahlul Bayt were created. What is tawassul? Tawassul is, does not mean that this person is worshipping another person. Tawassul is, means putting a means to get closer to Allah. Using a means, using something to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something that Allah has allowed you to use. Not something that Allah has not allowed you to use. What the mushrikeen did, the idol worshippers, they would go build, build an idol and then they would come and they say, this idol brings us closer to Allah. That is shirk, that is something haram. But there are some means that Allah says, I want you to use these means to get closer to me. I want you to use this road that I have built to get closer to me. Allah says in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 35, Ya amanu taqu Allah wa ilayhi al O you people who believe, have taqwa in Allah and use the wasila, use the means to get closer to Allah. What is the wasila? That is what Allah allows us to use. Something that Allah says, it's okay, I allow you to use. What does Allah allow me to use? What does Allah order me to use? Sometimes this means can be prayer. It can be fasting. Allah says in the Quran, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ in order to get closer to Allah, use sabr, use patience, and use prayer. That will bring you closer to Allah. Once you use this means, that brings you closer to Allah, you have a stronger relationship with Allah. Another means that Allah allows us to use, or has ordered us to use, is the sadaqah. Paying charity, it removes tragedies. This is what the narrations say. As sadaqah تَدْفَعُ الْبَلَاءُ وَقَدْ أُبْرِمَ إِبْرَامًا Sometimes a disaster is written down that that disaster is supposed to fall upon me. You go, you pay sadaqah, that disaster will be erased. It won't happen on me. This is what the narrations of Rasulullah say. And this is a hadith that is accepted by all the Muslims. Sadaqah? What is the relationship of me giving money giving food to someone who is in need, what's that relationship with Allah removing the bala, removing the tragedies that are supposed to fall upon me? I don't know the relationship, but Allah says there is a relationship. You go, you pay sadaqah, the disasters will fall. The disasters won't happen upon you. The disasters are stopped. Another means is salat al-rahim. Salat al-rahim, where you, you have a connection with your family. The narrations say that if you have Salat al-Rahim, Allah will prolong your life. You're supposed to live 30 years, you live 60 years. This is what it says in the narrations. If you have connection with your family, if you are good with your family. Another means is istighfar, asking Allah to forgive you. When I have done something wrong, I ask Allah to forgive me. I do istighfar, I come to the masjid, I cry, I do something. I pick up a book of dua and I ask Allah to forgive me, Allah will forgive me. That comes in between the punishment and my sin. Another type of means is the tawassul. 
Another means is having the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Having Rasulullah come in between me and the punishment, me and the dua, me and my sin. And this is what Allah has allowed us to use. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا If they, O oh Rasulullah, if they come to you and ask you to do forgiveness, if they ask you to forgive them, ask you to ask Allah to forgive them, and you do, Allah will forgive them. Can anyone say this is shirk? This is in the Quran. The Muslims, they would come to Rasulullah, tell Rasulullah, Oh Rasulullah, ask Allah to forgive us. He raises his hands, he asks Allah to forgive them, Allah forgives them. Is that shirk? So why is it that when some people accuse the Shias, some ignorant people from the ignorant sects, they accuse the Shias or accuse anyone. This is something that all the Muslims narrate. Accuse them of being mushrik, accuse them of their tawheed. When they come and they say, Oh Rasulullah, ask Allah to forgive us. Oh Ahlul Bayt, ask Allah to forgive us. Because you are the ones who are close to Allah, you have the right to ask Allah to forgive us. And this is what Allah has allowed in the Quran. And this is what Adam did. Adam, he told, he told Allah, Oh Allah, forgive me by Muhammad and the household of Muhammad. And that is Prophet Muhammad, Imam Ali, Fatima al-Zahra, Imam al-Hasan, and Imam al-Hussein alayhum salam. He asked Allah to forgive him by these five Ahl al-Bayt. And after these kalimat, after he asked Allah by the love of the Ahl al-Bayt, Allah forgave him because of the Ahl al-Bayt, because of the position of the Ahl al-Bayt. This is something that's not surprising. This is not even, this isn't a narration from the Shia scholars. This is a narration from Al-Hakim and Neshaburi and Ibn Hajar. We also have narrations where Rasulullah, he himself would do tawassul in himself and in the prophets before him. Tabarani, one of the Sunni scholars, he mentions in his book, Al-Mu'jam Al-Kabir, he says that when Fatima bint Asad, the mother of Amir al-Mu'mineen, the wife of Abu Talib. When she passed away, Rasulullah, he dug her grave. And he carried her and he put her in the grave. Then he laid down in the grave next to her. He laid down in the grave and he began asking Allah, saying, Allahumma inni as'aluka bihaqqi nabiyyika wa bihaqqi al-anbiya'i min qabli إلا غفرت لأمي فاطمة بنت أسد ووسعت عليها مدخلها Oh Allah, I ask you by the right, by the position of your Prophet referring to himself and the Prophets and the Prophets after me, the Prophets before me to forgive my mother he calls her the mother of Amir al-Mu'mineen he says my mother غفرت لأمي فاطمة بنت أسد then he lays in the grave next to her and he says, Rahimakillah, ya ummi ba'da ummi. Oh Allah, have mercy upon you, my mother, after my mother. He refers to the mother of Amir al Mu'minin as his mother. Then the companions, they come and they ask Rasulullah, What did you just do? That was something very strange where Rasulullah, he goes in the grave and he lays down in the grave and he says, My mother. And he asked Allah by himself and the prophets. Rasulullah tells them, I am Mubarak. My soul is Mubarak and Allah will make her grave easy for her because she was afraid of the tightness, the squeezing of the grave. So Allah makes the grave easy for her because of the shafa'ah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And this is exactly what Prophet Adam did. And because of that, Allah forgave him. In the next episode, we will look at the life of Prophet Adam and the children of Prophet Adam after Allah forgave him. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.